Hello guys, my name is Kilo and today I will explain the procedure I follow in creating the maps in our metroidvania game Astra Fading Stars. For this system we are going to use a very familiar to most of you formula which is the map formula of Hollow Knight. The main reasons for this selection are simplicity and practicality. To my perspective, this is a fundamental design that you can later expand upon and make it much more intricate. Today's map design analysis includes the most important features in Metroidvanias such as topology, abilities and upgrades, secret rooms and a system that GMDK likes to call locks and keys. Of course, these are principles that can be used in all kinds of games as well. Now, there are many levels of macro and micro implementation, so here is a breakdown. I would say that usually this is not a linear step by step procedure, but layers of design that happen in parallel. However, for simplicity's and clarity's sake, I will put them in order starting from macroscopic to microscopic level. That being said, we start from designing the overworld map into the different areas slash landscapes into the individual rooms which are then connected together in a global system. The reason I like to start with the big picture of things is that you can then have a general direction according to your story and world building, rather than blindly design piece by piece in an unspecified layout. The most frequent pattern in these kinds of games is having your player first visit some specific locations in the world before they are able to collect all the strength they need to reach the ultimate destination and the final boss. On that note, you can vaguely begin to place those critical points sparsely around the map so that the player will travel all across the continent and face all the different challenges along the way. Thus, you then begin drawing the routes connecting all the critical points in your map which may or not have a linear pattern. The linearity highly depends on what access the player has to his key abilities which will enable them to traverse the map and at what point of the game they can find them. Usually, you will have those key abilities obtainable in a recognized spot in your map and this is where you start putting your landmarks like towers, shrines, grooves, clearings, caves and what have you. Slowly, the story is built around the critical points and thus you begin to specify larger parts of the map. You may for example want your player to pass through a mysterious forest and meet some kind of strange creatures. These ideas will then bring forth side stories, events, placements of landscapes and of course world building and lore. At this point, even if you don't have your map complete, you definitely hold a very good idea of your general layout. Thus, you now proceed to the level design of the different areas. Here it is important to know which abilities the player will have at their disposal or which ones you want them to use more often. That way, you can design the topology accordingly. Usually, more platforming abilities mean you will get to space up your terrain and platforms more. Keep also in mind that upgrades are an important part of the player's progression. Often times you want to keep the important upgrades behind some extra challenging path, so you will have to make space on your map for these sections. Here's a rough sketch of this area. It is the beginning of the game, so we keep it pretty simple. We have a linear path that ends up in a boss fight. Then the player will proceed to the next area, which will be much more open. Now, this level acts more like a tutorial, where the player learns to manipulate their initial ability, the Astra Call. This is an ability that defines the game to a great degree, both in gameplay and lore-wise. That is why a lot of emphasis is given on teaching the player how to properly use it. When you have your general layout set up, you can then break it into parts. This will be your individual rooms or scenes of the level. This process becomes easier with experience and multiple iterations. At this point, it is good to keep in mind the relative size of the character, so you can have a general idea of the spacing. More on the character scaling later. Note that I am marking the lock points of the level. These are points that block the player's progression and can be overcome either with new abilities, items or events. 
Finally, I also like to mark other miscellaneous stuff like NPCs, events, checkpoints and secrets. Of course, all the details will be in the documentation files which you should write about your designs. Now we come to the part where we need to design each individual room. This is the time when all the micro details will be added. When designing the topology of the room, keep in mind the following parameters. Size of the player, mobility of the player and estimated current abilities. These parameters gives you a good idea about the spacing of your terrain and platforms. Of course, things can be readjusted in the process, but it's good to have an initial good estimation. I would also add roughly some gameplay elements such as enemies and platformings and also markings about secrets or story elements. Once again, the details of your level will be in the documentation files. Eventually, through many iterations, you will get a more defined topology and become more specific with your gameplay elements. Finally, you add the artwork and you have your room complete. With that being said, we can now proceed on drawing our minimap. But before that, I want to make a small post to inform you guys about our upcoming Metroidvania game, Astra Fading Stars. You can try a free demo on Steam right now. Also, a fantasy adventure book called Song of Elusica, the Ancient Gemstone is written in the same world as the game, so be sure to check it out. Ok, back to the map. So now I have all my individual rooms complete and I am going to place them in their corresponding place on the layout. See how each one of them is connected to one another. Keep in mind that the scaling of the player is always relative to the scaling of the map. In my case, the player is 5 times smaller in the area map and 10 times even smaller in the overworld map. This means that if I multiply the overworld map by 50 times, I would get the size of my game in pixels or inches. Now, when drawing the line art of the minimap, I always keep in mind the line's language. In my case, I don't want to reveal much information about the topology of each room, so I'm just drawing rough shapes just to give the player a general direction of their environment. Occasionally, I add some landmarks or markings to indicate important or characteristic features. Note that the presentation of the map can have many iterations before reaching its final state. In my case, I initially deliver to the player a rough layout of the area. Later on, as they discover more, the map will be filled with secret rooms or other markings. This pretty much wraps up the process. Gradually, the many different areas will connect together and complete the overworld map. Have fun with your own map designs and thanks for watching!